live. I know Greg loves when I say that. He is walking out the room. We've had some technical difficulty today. I really hope we're uh, live in the group. <laughs> today. Yeah, I just saw it come through. Oh, did you? Okay. Uh, today. It, oh, hold on. Let me get to our third person on here. Um, as I said, some technical difficulties. I see Greg. I see myself. Why can I not add Ashley? Oh, but I'm lost. I'm here. I'm here. You're here. Uh, there she is. There. I Hello. Oh, and I have people in the right order. That was serendipitous, really. Um, <laughs> that <laughs> never really... happens. What? What? That never happens. Never. Everyone's in the right order. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we're here today, and we're coming late because we had some technical difficulty. But we're here today, and there's three of us, and we're going to be talking about, I'm going to let Ashley say it or Greg say it, and I'm going to go uh, click around for a second. What are we talking about, guys? What are we talking about? <laughs> uh, my Trello board's not open. We're talking about how to be consistent with your content. Um, and, and grow. And grow. And grow. Yeah. So if you're joining us right now, <coughs> pipe in and say hi. Has, uh, you know, it's a funny start. We're all over the place a little bit. Great start that each of us are like, what's the topic again? <laughs> I'm still restarting my computer because it wasn't working. Uh, so funny. We got three people here. I wish I could see who's here. Guys, chime in. We got uh, hello, everybody. I am just uh, going to look on the Facebook page. Well, hello. So today's going to be a great topic. I'm not sure if you guys know. Ashley is... A moderator in the group and she owns a company called writer gal and uh, so we're very fortunate to have her here today to talk about content and uh, you know Greg Greg's pretty awesome owner of original 72 if I could say it for Greg he's amazing at graphics and uh, website right Greg I try to be right and then there's <laughs> me and you guys know who I am um, I'm Pip Seymour digital media we do search and social marketing and as I said today, we're gonna answer the ultimate question of how to be consistent with your content and grow. So why don't we let Ashley take it away? We got three kind of major points that we're gonna to hit today, and we definitely want you guys to chime in and give your points because marketing's a group effort. That's how we grow. So Ash, tell us what's one of the first things that you think people should be doing? First things. I think before you think anything about your brand, you should know, or sorry, anything about your content, you should know your brand. You should know, you know, visually what your brand is and what your brand stands for. You know, what are your values? What kind of language do you use? What kind of boilerplate content do you have that you can reuse all over the place, like about us statements or products? But I think having a clear vision of, who you are and your business before you get going is probably the most important first step. No. Yeah, I, I agree completely with that because if you don't have an identity for, for who you are, what you represent, what you're doing for people, then, you know, everything is just going to be a mess. Willy-nilly. Because you don't have a clear <clears throat> a clear understanding of who you're going after or what your target market is or what, what you're trying to say to them. It, it's just, you're, you're going to be flying by the seat of your pants. Yeah. You can't be consistent if you don't know who you are. So you'll be putting out conflicting messages, conflicting information, and people recognize that and they won't want to buy from you if you're not being consistent. <coughs> I can see that. Ashley's got a little bit of cold, so we got to give her a hand. Give her a hand. Don't say sorry. We got to give her a hand for showing up because that's awesome. Oh, I'm huh, sorry. Muted myself. <laughs> I um, heard you. I was just saying Ashley has a bit of a cold. So uh, we're thankful she's here today. We have Gwen. We have Sash. Uh, I didn't even get to invite people. Hi, guys. As I said, we're talking about content. What do you guys think about it? Do you think that your brand is the most important thing. I know when I started out, you know, my most important thing was getting getting clients. Um, and I guess I talked the talk because I got some. But I was not consistent and I have been chasing my tail for a long time. Now, can you guys hear me? Oh, yes. Um, I've been chasing my tail with content and growing and 
it's hard. It's super hard. It's super hard to figure out what your what your messaging is and what your um, what your brand is. So, how would you guys suggest that people go about trying to start this process? Uh, I would say for me, just start writing things down as you come up with the ideas. Hmm. Like you know, that. if you write them down, you're more likely to one remember them and two stick with them. Oh, and I guess, and three, if you ever hire help, you know, virtual assistants, assistants, just help in your work, then you're easy, it's easier to pass that information off to someone else once you've already got it written down. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point and something I don't think a lot of people consider um, in when you might try to expand or have someone else work for you or do something for you. If you don't know your business and what you're trying to do, how are you supposed to relay that to someone else to effectively be able to do something for you like right away? Mm, it's interesting. So, so it sounds like the, one of the first things we're doing is process. Mm -hmm. right? So building that process into our lives. So then the first thing we do is start with brands. So, and that consists of messaging and images and color. Yeah. And... All of that stuff should be included. Yeah. So, would you suggest that people start this before they even start their business? You should, ideally. Right. I mean, how can you start a business if you don't know what you want to be? Mm. You know? I mean, they have an underlying idea of what they want to be. It's getting it out on paper and, you know, finalizing and, and identifying this is what it is. You know, people have ideas all the time of, of what they want to do um, and and they'll start doing that but what they don't do a lot of the times is is to actually write it out map it out okay I have this idea this is what I want to do what does that look like define it all like work it out on paper or or what have you and and make sure you know what you want to do and then you know if that obviously you want to do that from from the perspective of, of what are you going to offer as a business, then once you have those types of things, you know, you can, you can go for the branding and get an identity to, to understand what does that look like visually as well. But I, I you know, we've said it before in past Geek Speaks um, with Haley on, you know, the, the defining your brand um, is, is a lot more important to start with than, you know, creating the identity. You can't really create an effective identity without the strategy behind it. Mm, that kind of leads us right into our next topic. But, you know, I know that there are people out there that they get stopped in their business because they haven't done this stuff. And I will say, I think it's really important. I do. And I think it's essential. But I also think the brands change. Um, mm -hmm. Logos can change. Like, nothing is written in stone. I mean, Greg, you a couple weeks ago had your, you were doing a new logo for yourself, right? It, it had a consistent flow to it, but so nothing's written in stone. You can change things and, you know, things get better over time, right? Right, Greg? Greg's like, no. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't a logo. I was, I was expanding my branding colors oh. and in my process of expanding my branding colors, I was playing around with some graphics with the new colors, not in a process of, I want to redefine my, my brand or my logo, just introduce these colors. And what I ended up with in just playing around with the new colors I was wanting, um, I cr had created this thing that I put out on the group. It was, it wasn't a, I wasn't going through my own rebranding. It was more introducing additional colors to my brand mm. to continue uh, evolving my brand with some more color right which goes right to the point of evolving your brand so but we were a little off topic we were getting into uh having goals and plans so i think i think this yeah. is this is so i don't shine in the area of creating a brand i've had greg's help and uh yeah it's been more pieced together but i do like plans and goals something just changed on my computer that was <laughs> very strange uh, but whatever whatever uh, I think we're still here <laughs> um, so let's talk about plans and goals do you guys write them down <coughs> as 
Ashley, what do you recommend for making plans and goals with our content and our marketing? Have them. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. Have a plan. Like being consistent, you need to have a plan so that you are consistent. You're not just putting things out there in the moment. While there is an element of that, that something should be done in the moment. If you have that plan, and when it comes to your content and your marketing, you know what to work towards. You know what's expected of you. You can plan your time better, your resources, your budgets, and it will be consistent because you know that every Monday you're putting out a blog post or every Thursday you're coming on Geek Speak. You know, it's it's all planned out. Mm, <coughs> hey, Yolanda's here. Hey, Yolanda. Um, Hi, Yolanda. We are talking about uh, how to be consistent with your content and your marketing. So, Ashley, do you have, or Greg, uh, Greg, what do you recommend for clients when they, when you're talking about doing their marketing and being consistent? Well, like Ashley said, it's it's good to have um, a plan of um, your topics uh, that will most benefit your brand um, and your business. Um, having a schedule on when that content is going to be released what channels it's going to be released on. Uh, is it is it through blogging? Is it through social media? Are we doing paid advertising? Um, those types of things. Identifying all that stuff um, and coming up with the, the messaging uh, that you're going to be putting out there, including any visuals, um, is, is the first step that I tell people we need to identify all of this because once you gather all of that information, fulfilling your content marketing after becomes much easier because you've prepared, you've planned, you know all of the things that you need to do or create to implement that mm-hmm. uh, marketing plan. Right, Mona's here. Uh, Yolanda says, my peeps, yeah. We love you guys, you guys are great. So chime in here and how do you, Mona, I know you do content. And I know you do content for other businesses. Ashley does too. I do too. Sometimes it's uh, you're you're sailing the boat as you're building it, but that could be your client's fault. So, (laughs) right. So when we build consistency, um, now we didn't. Now I don't know if you guys know this, but behind the scenes, we get together before a couple days. We have a little chat about what we're going to talk about. One thing that wasn't mentioned, and we're gonna dig deeper into this um, plan, plan and goals, but uh, using a project management system. Now, mm-hmm. Greg, Greg might laugh at me here because I'm gonna mention one that I was maybe a little against initially, and that's Trello. And it's great for managing what you're gonna post when, how often, keeping track, having your blog post all there, right, on different cards. That's super. Now, do you guys use a project management system? Trello is great. I use the same thing. I like how it's you can drag and drop things around as things change, Yeah. which is really nice. And I like how visual it is. I'm a very visual learner, even though I'm a writer. But the visual aspect of it and how you can link it to – I'm sounding like a walking advertisement for it. Right. Um, <laughs> how you can link it to Google Docs, wherever you have your stuff, or – whatever you can bookmark things, have it go in there. I use it too for project management for all my stuff and it, it works good for me. Yeah. I actually, uh, Oh, uh, team Asana. We got a team Asana in here and cats joined us. Yeah. Uh, Sasha is saying she loves project management Asana for sure. I personally like it because it helps me with my planning and my goals. Um, so, you know, doing this live every week, we plan out what we're doing before. So I could actually create a month's worth of header blog post images, which uh, Sash really likes this stuff. So batching things, right? Uh, Greg, do you see your clients batching batching things to be consistent? Uh, well, I try to get them to uh, batch stuff um, because it's uh, easier for time's sake, um, mm. more effective. And uh, a lot of the times when you want to put something out, if you're not prepared, you're scrambling to get it out. Your content's not going to be as good as a result. So, um, yeah, effective planning and project management tools is key to 
be able to be consistent and um, and and be able to grow uh, because you are getting that stuff out on um, you know whatever schedule you set for yourself. Yeah, right. yeah. It's uh, I also find that like you know having that plan. For instance, I sell pay per click advertising. Ashley sells writing and Greg sells website building. If we were going to create content, it's, it's smarter for us to look at what we sell and talk about things in, in that versus a lot of other things, or at least making sure we're talking about that stuff once a month, because that shows our expertise, which leads into that no like, and trust, which makes people want to be friends with you, buy from you, hang out with you. I don't know, join a Facebook group, you know, right? <laughs> so, so I, I, I do find clients like herding cats a little bit, just a little bit, right? For this stuff. Um, but one of the first things we do, and I don't know what you guys do or recommend to your clients, but we do a big brainstorming session on titles, right? The one thing I don't do is, is test those titles, right? Do you, Ash, do you do that? A little bit once in a while. I do it more for emails because it's really easy mm. with a lot of the email programs. <clears throat> I know there's WordPress plugins that you can test different titles for. Ooh, that's cool. I believe. Greg might know better on that. Some A-B testing I, for titles. I actually, no, I actually don't. Mm. There's got to be one out there somewhere. A lot of, uh, most of my clients are not bloggers. I'm dealing with, um, you know, law firms and yeah. And stores doing e-commerce, um, not so the content marketing from the site or like the blogging aspect is is not something I'm completely familiar with doing for for a lot of people because I focus on other stuff. Right, right, and that's fair. Um, do you, so, Mona? I have to say because she made me laugh, which she just said, "I'm team pen and paper." Everybody's like, he was that's pretty. I understand that. I do understand that. I um, I doodle when I talk to people. Um, I do that too. Do yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's a great learning tool I find. So so okay, we've 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 gotten to some nitty gritty here. We want to brainstorm. We want to batch things. We want to plan our goals and streamline how we're doing things. Right now, there's one other thing that's kind of big that you can do and uh ashley's an expert at it so i'm gonna let her take yes. it away for a sec what is it ashley what is it? oh my god i'm dying to know are you ready are you ready, ready? it's mind-blowing okay yeah it's did you see the little mind -blowing having... icon i put in the anyway <laughs> i'm sick give me a break <laughs> i like it i like it what you need is templates for everything templates mm. You know, so this, when you have these templates in place, and I mean like graphic templates, templates for how you're going to structure your blog posts, how you're going to do blog titles, whatever it is, templates for everything, it's easy to just plug in what you need for each thing you do. It makes it easier. And when it's easier, you're going to want to do it. And when you want to do it, it's going to be sustainable for you to keep doing. Right. At least you're not going to hate doing it. <laughs> Hopefully, that's the goal. You know what's funny is, so I have templates like checklists for doing analytics, for AdWords, for all this stuff, but I don't have a template <coughs> for blogging. Um, and I think, you know, after talking to you, Ash, uh, I think I it's, might just have one. Right? And I think it's super necessary. Ooh, ooh, did you guys hear that? I have to say, Kat saying, who's got time to test? I'm like, right. <laughs> Kat, you don't have to test everything. Once in a while, test some different variations, you know? Right. That's what I like about marketing is that you can go full-blown like Disney, Marvel, Nike, if you have the budget and the time, but most of us don't. So we just take the marketing that works for our time, for our budget, for what we need. Yeah. That's why marketing is so great. We can just do what we need to do. And it's so customizable. It's true. So, Greg, do your clients use templates? Um, I I would imagine some of them have uh, templates for the content that they're putting out. Um, 
typically they're creating all of their content or, you know, someone like Ashley is writing content for the customer uh, because I don't create uh, content for customers. I just help them figure out and, um, and get a plan in place to um, have content put out. <laughs> See, that's important. Though. So, I think that's a lot about the strategy, right? Because you're doing images which have to match to the content. Which actually goes to that big question you asked in the group this week, which a lot of people have mixed feelings on. Is it, mm -hmm. it's like the chicken before the egg. What comes first? Well, it's it? funny because when Ashley said she, you know, she, she loves Trello because it's very visual and she, she learns visual. I thought immediately of a, a comment she made, you know, because she's a writer, she thinks in text or writing, but I think most of us, think visually we don't think what is you know we don't think text you know we don't envision text we envision visuals but do we and envision then and then we, when and then we write text mm. okay but then do we visualize because we visualize moments moving right so then do we visualize in video mm. well video visual it's yeah it's the same Similar, one's moving. Whether it's still or moving. Right, right. Fans either either with... way, it's visual. It's not text. Right, that's yeah. true, that's true. So this funny last bit that we're talking about templates really, like, pushes that number one thing, the thing that I'm not a natural at, which is getting your colors, having consistency, right, making sure. So I don't know if you guys know this, but one when I literally started this group, Greg saw me doing it, and he saw my graphic. And he said, Pip, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. I saw your clip art. Oh, it was terrible. Clip art. I, I will find the graphic, and I will share it, and you all will have a really good laugh. because it's. I seem to recall there was like a donkey or a giraffe. giraffe. There was a giraffe and a clock. I was trying to yeah. build um, the cyberpunk theme because... I like that theme. I think it's super cool. Nothing and... says cyberpunk like giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> creative. I am creative, okay? <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so consistency. So let's jump back to templates for a sec because, Ashley, can you just quickly for me, maybe the people out there, can you outline what a template could look like for oh, writing? It, for writing, it could be as much as... Well, for blogs, for example, how I do my blogs, I have a Word doc up. I've got a section for intro, outro, and then usually three points. Okay. So when I do a blog post, it's usually based on three or five points. And then I just fill them in. Like, it's as simple as that. Mm. And for graphics, it's as simple as using Canva. Right. Setting up a page in there, doing a save as, setting it as a template. And then just switching out the graphics. I've got a client that I do that for every week for their blogs. Oh, nice. I switch out the graphic and they switch out the name of the article in the bottom. And it literally, don't tell my client this, but it literally takes me a minute. Yeah, but that's the reason it takes you a minute is because you're planned and organized. Like it's it, planned. The template's there. If yeah. I had to create that from scratch every time or create a different layout every time, that would take a lot more time. You know, I have to say, creating okay. creating that in one minute doesn't take away the value that you're providing to the client. No, though. it doesn't. So, yeah. Yeah. No, not at all. I mean, you know what? You you pay somebody because of the experience they have <coughs> and and the ability to create what you want, not not yeah. with the time it takes, right? Exactly. So template templates for me are, um, you know, sometimes creating an ad layout where there's some type of imagery, um, headers, content, mm -hmm. you know, branded uh, material like the logos and web addresses and contact information put together in a visual um, ad that may be something we create so that when we put out information, um, the look is consistent and the branding is consistent. And when they look at that, a lot of the times they're like, okay, I need to identify an image. I need to, you know, a header around this long, add text around this long. And it helps. It definitely helps people come up with um, 
a lot of their messages when they can visually look and be like, okay, I know exactly what I want to say there now. And I know how much I need to create for it. It's like when you're making cookies. So when I make cookies, I get out all my ingredients. I have them on the counter and then I look and see what I need for that, mm. that recipe. And it's all there. It's easy. It's fast. I'm not freaking out running around the kitchen so you, trying to find the chocolate chips. So you pull out all the ingredients first. I always do. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, the thing that's happening in life, in my life right now, that I'm learning maybe as I get older is consistency is built from process and planning. Like, and so, and I know it gets hard to plan and do process when you're trying to get stuff out, right? Because all of a sudden you have to take more time. But if you take that time, right? To sit down, plan, it's going to change. It's not going to be perfect, right? How many of us, you know, you can't be perfect the first time around. And if you are, oh my God, tell me what you're perfect at. Cause <laughs> I want to know. Um, Kat is saying, you know, when it comes to experience, it's, it's, uh, value. So just to add that in, yeah. but so do you guys have any last kind of things you want to say? We're going to give like people <coughs> tips or props or something. I want to, I was wanting to ask Ashley yeah. something or her opinion on uh, content related stuff, which was if you're creating content for customers, do you suggest that that content goes out or could go out in multiple forms with slight variations or do you put out one piece yes. of and, you know, don't put it out again? Yeah, no. No, no. Get the biggest bang for your buck. You know, one of the programs that I'm starting to run, I'm going to do a whole course on it as well, is something called repurposing content. So you invest in that really great blog post, that really great Facebook Live that you're going to do. And then, yes, definitely take out pieces from that and tweet it and put it on social media. Turn it into a PDF download. Turn it into a checklist turn it into a course like mm -hmm. definitely don't use things just once if you don't have to if it's a good piece of content reuse it parse out pieces and keep reusing it right right definitely y yolanda's saying yes repurpose content but uh, she's <laughs> also asking a really good question which is um uh Who froze? Was, how what did i freeze um she's <laughs> what what nothing can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, she's asking how how long does it take to plan for a quarter or a year with your content? Oh. There's no one answer. It depends on how much you want to put out there. Right. So and how much you want to repurpose the stuff that you're putting out there too. I think there's a couple of things here. Well, how long <laughs> do you want a blog post to be? I will say if you do start chunking out, so write first headlines brainstorm right if you're doing it for a quarter you know you could probably get if you're publishing every week and it's three to five hundred words you could probably get it out in like three days of like drilling in because you're doing research you're creating graphics your it depends on what you're doing too right but i think yeah it takes about that long how long do you think red uh what Sorry, I'm a little bit flustered because it paused for me for like at least a minute. Oh, <laughs> so, you were right here. You looked fabulous. I know. You didn't hear me say, is it frozen? No, I just thought you were listening really intently to oh, what you were saying. I don't, I've, I've pulled that trick before, like do the still shot. <laughs> uh, it's I, I got sidetracked because I was thinking of mentioning something after Ashley was talking about, you know, repurposing content or putting out <laughs> putting it out multiple times is that I did the same thing with um, images for one of my customers where we were trying to put out more on his Instagram feed um, but he was concerned because he only had a certain number of um, really good high quality images. so I said well each of those images can be four separate posts image mm. split it up into smaller three small you know closer in shots that we put out 
And then the fourth one could be the complete shot summarizing like the past, the, the previous three that we had put out. And he was like, Oh, that sounds awesome. Cause that's going to extend the amount of content uh, visually that we can put out. Um, so, so as she was saying for text, I can, we can do the same thing for, for some people with their images. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that means, so let me, let me just get this right before we go. Cause we're going to have to go in a minute. But so if you're writing an article, if you have a header image and maybe four other images the size of a social media post, you can, if you did what Ashley said and you write a, a intro and a conclusion in three points, you could do a post for every point and, you, and kind of change it a little. And there you go. There's one blog post a month with four, you know, social posts, one a week. Right. The, um, yeah. So a little bit of time. Sounds yeah. like we're playing more in graphics and writing and research. So, um, so that was fun, guys. <coughs> That's all the time we have for today. If you want to know more about templates, I know you can directly message Ash and she will help you. Um, and uh, did that with a great graphic, Yolanda saying before we go. <laughs> Lastly, do you guys know what you do? You want to know what we're talking about next week? Right? Right? Greg, do you know? Yes, yes, yes. Greg. I have no idea. We're talking about how to get people to engage with your business online. Right? Mm. Should be pretty interesting. Um, We're so thrilled that we had Ash here. And uh, we know she's going to come back. She's a moderator extraordinaire. So send her some love, peeps, because she's a rock star. Mondays. Right? And, uh, And we'll see you guys next week. Oh, oh, wait, do you guys have any offers right now for people? Yeah, I've got one. Hmm, what you got? Speaking of, speaking of blogs, we talked a lot about blogs today. I've got two offers that are related. One is if you're in the Vancouver area and want to come to my live 90-minute blog workshop, mm-hmm. I'm going to show you in 90 minutes how to make your blog easy, sustainable, and profitable. And you're going to come away with a two to three month content calendar ready to go in 90 minutes. Wow. So if you're live in Vancouver, want to come to that message me and I'll send you the link. I've got a couple spots left. And if not message me anyways, cause I want to turn that into an online course mm. for those that can't come in person. Cool. cool. And that will be launched very soon. So message me if you're interested. Right. That's awesome. Okay. You guys yeah. heard it here. And, uh, As usual, if you're looking for a really good website, (coughs) Greg's right there. And if you're looking for uh, something like pay-per-click advertising, I'm right here. Okay, so we're out of here. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for joining us. Super fun. Uh, See you next week, right? Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you.